Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you for your time. I know that you're uh, you're America's busiest actress. Oh, thank you. No, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Um, let's get to know each other. Where are you from? Did you uh, are you from the East Coast or the West Coast? I'm from the West Coast. I'm from San Diego. Um, oh. I was born in San Diego. I grew up uh, in San Diego and I still live in San Diego, even though I do the acting. So there's a lot of um, trips back and forth, but um, I do really love my city, so I can't leave it. I so love I'm San Diego. Here. I actually attended uh, school there uh, oh. at USIU when it was a school of performing arts uh, up by Scripps cool. Ranch. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah, I didn't know they had a performing arts school there. Well, it's, you know, it's been a lifetime ago, but uh, there, and I performed at the Globe Theater, uh, uh, you know, and, oh. and did yeah. Shakespeare in the park and had an improv company uh, there. That's but uh, I love San Diego too. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful place. And I think it does some of the creativity and the performing arts does trickle down a little bit to San Diego. Were you always a drama kid? I mean, even at an early age? You know, I wasn't. I never um, I never did any theater, which I know a lot of actors do, and I think that it can be really beneficial um, to like have those combined, but I didn't ever do theater. I just kind of, as soon as I started acting, went into like film and television. Wow, and what brought you into the acting world? Kind of a part performing art, actually, but um, I was a dancer. So um, I did like competitive dance as a kid and then I was um, trained in like classical ballet. So I did that for a lot of my childhood and that kind of sparked an interest in performing. So after doing some, some dancing, I, I, tried, I tried acting and I loved it. Wow. Uh, dancing is very, very hard work. I mean, a dedicated dancer probably can outdo a football player in, in stamina. I think it's stamina. I think also in like, like, I think mobility is such like an important thing. And it's, it's like dancers are so, um, they have so much flexibility and I try to maintain it just for my health. <laughs> I think it's good. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I think that something hard about that sport too, and something kind of like acting as well is it's not just a sport. It, there's a performance aspect. So not only are you doing hard things, but you have to make them look easy. Hmm. So, yeah, and like constantly yeah. going through pain. You know, it, it takes a lot of practice to make something look effortless. And uh, it's it, it's always a, you know, a, 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 a huge weight on an actor's shoulders um, to make sure each performance has that truth in it. And you yeah. you give yourself over to the to the part. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. Uh, and acting classes, I mean, obviously you, you've attended a bunch. I did. I did a lot of improv classes because I think that that's like, that's also something I would recommend to young actors is do improv classes because it helps you, it helps you build your character as an actor. Like just <laughs> getting really uncomfortable with uncomfortable moments and like finding your way through them. That's what that helped me with. And then my, um, incredible manager Sharon Lane pretty much shaped me as an actor um, through just working with her and training with her um, for years so uh, a, lo a lot of what I've done and a lot of like vocal training too was through her yeah so she really helped me yeah surrounding yourself with the best people possible is always good advice to people who are trying to you know come up in the business a lot of uh, young actors think they can make it on their own and, and it's it takes a village i know? was just gonna say it takes a village for sure and like like supportive family supportive team it, it's such a hard thing to do by yourself especially with how much rejection there is you kind of need the emotional support as well as you know like the uh the acting support <laughs> and how is that for you i mean the the the, the audition process russell crowe told me that an actor is a professional auditioner and only stops auditioning when they get a part. I love that he said that and I totally agree with that. It's so spot on, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah I, like 
that's also something that I tell, like if anybody is, you know, asking like, oh, what's it like? Or like, I want to get into it. What do I do? What do I prepare for? Just prepare to audition and accept that that's probably going to be 99% of your job. And if you can't enjoy that or accept that, then it's probably not for you just because that's what you're going to be doing with your time, getting scripts in, getting, you know, a few pages to 10 pages and working on something new and, and maybe being told yes, but also being told no and knowing that, you know, it's not personal. And, and every time you get an audition, it's a really big opportunity for growth, yeah. not just doing the part, but just getting the opportunity to try it. Do you miss in-person auditions? I mean, yes and no. Like, yes, I love, I love in-person auditions. I think that they were really cool because you get to just, there's just a little bit more there. You know what I mean? But also as somebody who lives in San Diego, it's the technicality <laughs> of it is pretty nice. It allows me to like, it allows me to do it a lot more. And like, I, you know, I kind of, you know, I'm going to college too. So like having that flexibility, I do like that it's flexible. Well, do, you, so, do you have a, like a little area in the house that you audition that you do your auditions in, or do you go to the college and use their stage? Gosh, you know, maybe I should be taking advantage of that. That's a good idea. <laughs> well, just asking. Yeah. Hey, that's very smart, especially if you don't have um, like good equipment. But I do. I'm actually like a photographer, so I kind of do that in my spare time. So I have the equipment necessary. I have a backdrop, and I just you know take up the whole living room. <laughs> on those days <laughs> like the giant back above. <laughs> it's a whole ordeal for sure but on something like abigail let's we'll talk about your your uh, resume in just a moment but abigail did you have to drive up to la and do a final audition or did you no. audition virtually yeah so it was there was taping i taped um scenes but otherwise there wasn't any in person until after i got the part and um, the the writer was familiar with my work, so he kind of already, you know, had had known me a little bit, and um, and then I had worked with the writer and the director on a short um, yeah. that we did. So we we were all kind of acquainted a little bit after I had booked Abigail, and we weren't able to film Abigail until um, like I had booked Abigail, I got the part, and then we filmed a short. And then we finally, kind of like after, um, you know, the whole pandemic, could finally do it. came all the way here from California. Abigail, but you can call me Abby. Lucas. I could be a pretty good friend. You know, it's bad enough I had to deal with what happened with your father. The last thing we need is some troubled kid next door. You don't even know anything about him. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the character of Abigail, because boy, <laughs> she, she's, she's, right? I think I lived next door to her once. <laughs> Yes, Abigail is absolutely crazy. Um, yeah, she's not somebody I would ever want to be friends with or acquaint acquainted with, um, but she was such a blast to play. And um, Abigail doesn't really, she doesn't really experience emotions like most people. She doesn't really experience empathy. And when you think that she does, it's an act. And with every conversation that she has with someone in in the movie there's a different angle with everybody it's always about an angle it's always some type of manipulation and as an actor that was very difficult to do because my kind of approach to all the characters and everything i film is a hundred percent understand the intention of the character so that you can get thrown into any scene they can add a new scene or anything like that and i'm gonna know 
how to approach it because I'll understand the character enough. And with Abigail, she's just so different that it was a little hard. Um, uh, when I saw the film, I'll tell you what struck me about your performance. And, and uh, I, I don't know how, <laughs> how you're gonna take this, but not exactly, but similarly to Meryl Streep in Devil Wears Prada, she is so underplayed at times that you actually believe her. And then the crazy pops in. And she doesn't yeah. have to she doesn't have to yell, she doesn't have to go nuts all the time, but you know that the fuse is there. I absolutely love that movie. That's definitely one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites in Meryl Streep too, just because I think she does does such a wonderful job. Uh, to hear that comparison is, I really, I love it and thank you. And I think that there is, thinking about it, there is so much similarity in that. Like, as you mentioned, because Abigail does have a coldness to her, especially with her mother. And when she is angry, she doesn't always need to yell or scream or throw a fit in the way that, yeah, Mer Meryl Streep's character does. It's, it is understated. Now, now coming from the world of dance and 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 that do you do you hear rhythms and cadences in the in the parts that you play especially abigail was there a certain rhythm to how she spoke and how she moved yeah yeah absolutely that's a really cool question um i think that there's two different like aspects to that so first like as a as a dancer with being really kind of having to be in touch with how you're physically moving and how that, what kind of like emotions that portrays and 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 how people perceive that. They, there's definitely a physical approach that I take to each actor and, and how they carry themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone is different from everybody else. So that, that definitely was going on with Abigail, especially with her very strong personality switches, is I could kind of show a bounciness sometimes and then a coldness other times. And then, Honestly, I'm not a very musical person. I don't have, I don't have a very good. I'm not in touch with rhythms that much. But I think with all my vocal training. <laughs> but doesn't a dancer have to be in touch with rhythm? It was always my weak point. I was always <laughs> off on time. Yeah, that was. It was actually my. That was one of my main struggles. Is I was like, I can't find the rhythm. I'm off on the time. Yeah. That's me. I can't. I can't dance. When I try, I look like a rubber ball in heat. I just can't dance. It's so hard. It's so challenging. I don't blame you. Um, yeah, but my vocal training with Sharon, um, she really helped me with like, uh, there's a way you speak that sounds real and there's a way that you speak that sounds like acting. And she really like kind of beat that out of me, that little acty, acty voice. Um, that kind of sounds chirpy, but yeah. I actually brought it back a little bit for Abigail just because I wanted her to feel off-putting at times. I wanted her to feel like there was a fakeness to her sometimes. Wow. That's my that's, approach. That's great consideration for an actress to uh, uh, to hit upon. Even even the, the timbre of a voice can change a character. Yeah, hugely, hugely. And I think that like, there's, there's some examples, there's some things that like the director and I talked about, like movies that I wanted to, that I wanted to watch that would help me. And like Nightcrawler, I don't know if you see that with Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Such a good movie, right? Jake Gyllenhaal, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's phenomenal. And and um, I really liked how his character just felt so off-putting when he's speaking to, other people and then when he's by himself you he doesn't have that fakeness to him but he still seems off just in a different way yeah well there's something socially awkward about him as you were saying but it's it, it's it's almost creepy um you know how he is around other people in that film because he doesn't like people yes isn't, isn't it such a strange thing i think he just did a really good job with the way he approached it so I tried to emulate her a little. What was the most difficult part of Abigail that you uh, you had to get through? Hmm. Okay, two things. One was tapping into her, her emotions mm -hmm. and or her lack thereof. Um, it was kind of confusing at times. I had to 
really work to understand her and also how cold it was. <laughs> it did so many night shoots. <laughs> it was like, it was supposed to be summer in Alabama in the 70s. Hot, hot nights, right? We filmed in Central California in spring and it was like 40 oh. degrees at night. Yeah. So I was in like a t-shirt and shorts and freezing my butt off and trying not to look cold. <laughs> Well, that's acting. It's acting! that you played, Abigail included, Diana and uh, Amelia, uh, you know, I think that was under the, under the sun. Under the sun. Yeah. Yeah, Amelia. yeah. Do you take a piece of them with you? I mean, do you, do, you, do they live inside of you? I, I don't mean in a, in a weird way, but. No, no, you hear that all the time. Yeah, with actors. Um, I think, I think I'm just so, so not a method actor that I wouldn't say that I carry them with me in that way that maybe method actors do talk about, but I think that I I really take a piece of that, like the, that experience and that character. I, I like I don't really live in it, especially when, like even when I'm filming, but like I have very strong memories and emotions that are linked to those characters. And like, when, especially when you film like a hard scene and you really have to get into it, it, it just doesn't go away. And it's weird because the emotions that you feel when you're, you're doing a hard scene especially they feel real <laughs> so oh, believe me yeah, yeah. right you know, every every college class you take is is important but working on real sets i mean they, they it can't compare that that experience so i i would imagine that every set you've been on big or small is adds into your education as far as as far as how to treat other people set etiquette you know, when to eat the donut, you know, all that. Right? Yeah, absolutely 100%. Nothing compares to the learning experience of being on set. And and it's, it's actually really exciting to like, to be going to college at the same time as doing these things. Because, you know, you, you learn all this stuff and you get told, you know, this is how you act for a job or whatever. But nothing compares to actually being thrown into it and and doing it and trying to do your best and, and learning the etiquette and learning how to be a professional and in like with myself i started acting when i was a kid and there's there's no kids in the business you have to you have to be an adult temporarily yeah. and, and so. you better you know on the breaks you're sitting there with you know whoever uh, you know and they're they just talk to you like you're you know their age you know it's just kind of a weird a family kind of situation. Yes, it is. And and like, you have to be, <laughs> like sets are just some very high stress environment. You have to be up for the stress. You have to be up for the chaos, the yelling, the um, go, 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 go. Yeah. So, yeah. Go, 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 wait, 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 go, go, wait. It's how it is. Do you, what do you bring to, to cure the boredom on set too? Because there's a lot of downtime. Do you bring a deck of cards with you, a chess set? Yeah, I try to not bring, I really don't use my phone that much when I'm filming just because it it's too vortexy. You know, it just really sucks you in. So I try to, um, I bring a book. That's what I was doing on Abigail is I brought a book. And I also wanted to like, <laughs> see the thing is, is I particularly chose a book that I wasn't super enthralled with because when you have a book, I don't know if you've experienced this, when you have a book that you're so into, you get sucked in and you get like emotionally kind of in that place. So I brought, I brought two books. It was a series. I read through the books in my downtime and it was like a good mystery book, but I wasn't feeling like emotionally invested. Yeah, you should bring, bring a big book of story problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I should have been doing like crosswords. 
it's yeah something like that <laughs> i know you've directed um but mm. is that something you're aiming for too is to be a a, a director and producer oh i you know I, i'd love to um i think as i get acquainted more with like the business side of it i'd like to produce um i'd also kind of yeah as directing as well just everything i think everything in the business that all interwebs together is worth trying as an actor and something that i'd want to do obviously acting is my thing that i'm most drawn to but i think that especially in this time when it's so much easier to make your own projects and bring them to life to be able to do other have other skill sets and also like you know if you're a director if you're a producer if you want to write something you know like do it with yourself in mind and then you get to create it with yourself in mind It is so good to meet you, Ava, and and just I, I I've been looking forward to this. I was a little nervous. Did you tell that I was yeah. nervous? No, not at all. Could you tell I was because I was definitely no. nervous. No, you're uh, you're America's uh, number one rising star, and uh, um, it, it, you've got you've got an incredible career in front of you, and so uh, thank you. You are, and I hope we catch up on the next film. I really do. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed speaking with you. All For right. Sure. I'll catch up with you on social media too. Okay. Sounds good. Meet, Thank meet you. the same. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.